We're rolling. Welcome to the House Dudes Podcast, where we invite you to follow us on our journey towards financial freedom using the power of real estate. I'm Jack Haas. And I'm Josh Koth. Here at House Dudes, we believe in a couple key principles. Number one, the best way to retain information is by teaching it to others. And number two, a rising tide lifts all boats. We're not competitors, we're a community. So let's get into some real estate investing. So we have Devin Redmond on the line here today, and Devin is kind of a, this is a unique situation, Devin, because we don't have a lot of software people on the show. So, um, but I think what's really kind of cool about what you present is something that uh, a lot of people uh, might be missing here today. So I, I think this could be a really cool conversation um, because frankly, I'm a bit of a nerd too. So uh, maybe we'll get into the weeds a little bit, but why don't we start sure. things off with you introducing yourself and, and uh, maybe a little uh, background. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me, Jack. I appreciate it. So uh, my name is Devin. I uh, am currently head of customer success at Stessa. Uh, that's the software company you mentioned. And uh, we're based in San Francisco. And our core product is focused on financial management for rental property owners on the residential side. So um, some of your listeners may be familiar with financial aggregation platforms like Mint or Personal Capital. Mm -hmm. uh, so our product works in a very similar way in that you can connect all your bank accounts and bring everything together into a central dashboard that tracks all your income, your expenses, and uh, helps you figure out how you're actually doing. Um, we spent a lot of time talking with investors before we built our product. And we heard this consistent feedback that I'm not really sure how I'm doing. There's a lot to keep up with. I'm just trying to keep my head above water. And I've got spreadsheets, but they're always out of date. So that was the original impetus for us to put together the dashboards and to try to give investors a better idea as to where you are right now so that you can make better decisions. Sure. So, you know, uh, based on that information, like how did, how did the people uh, come up with this initial idea? I know that you're, you're part of the business development, but uh, I mean, the, did you or they have some investment background that, that you found, saw a need and filled that need? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've done a little bit of residential investing uh, of my own on the side for the past 15 years, but the two founders who I teamed up with um, about a year after they started um, and got things going, they have a, a significant portfolio, um, you know, 50 to 100 units spread across the U.S., and they've really been scaling up. And so a lot of the idea and even the specific um, features that we've developed have been responsive to the growing pains that they've experienced and the challenges they've found in trying to scale uh, while also being, um, you know, technology workers and having their own idea going on the side, right? Mm -hmm. So for, as I'm sure is true for a lot of your audience, real estate investing is a side gig. And so the pressure starts to mount and it gets very challenging to, um, you know, to focus and allocate the time. So right. a lot of this comes out of their experience, um, you know, everything from dealing with plumbers in the early days and figuring out how to get you know, um, tenant issues resolved quickly to, um, you know, okay, how do I get all my information over to the bank in an efficient way so that I can get two or three competitive quotes for financing for my next deal? Sure. Um, so it's kind of the, we're, we're covering a lot of the spectrum, although I do want to point out it's not property management software. Right. So it's kind of a layer up. It's more asset management. And um, our system will actually integrate with some property management reporting uh, so you can access that really granular data as well. Well, let's talk a little bit about that, that integration then. Um, do you have, are you able to uh, tie in to most banks or you mentioned Mint and, and some of those type of services. Is that you're using similar APIs and, and being able to, to pull that data in automatically? Yeah, exactly. There's a couple middlemen on the financial side, uh, Yodley Investnet and another company called Plaid that have built out a lot of that connection technology mm -hmm. between financial technology apps and platforms like us, and then uh, big banks on the other end. 
it's very, the coverage is really good on the, um, some of the larger banks. Um, and we actually work uh, with Yodli a lot to get access to tens of thousands of local banks. Because, um, you know, as you know, a lot of investors stick with local banks because they know the market, they're comfortable with the valuations and their zip codes and their counties. And so um, we find that uh, a lot of our users really need those connections to the smaller local banks, credit unions, local lenders. Right. Um, so I've actually been pleasantly surprised at how often we can connect to them and access our users' data and get it into their accounts for them. Um, it's, it's surprising to me, but it's, it's getting better every day. Sure. So when you have to uh, tackle one of those uh, smaller, newer banks, uh, how long does it typically take to add them to the platform? So Yodli does a lot of that for us. So they're um, you know, out there maintaining a lot of these connections. Um, so it's either kind of, at, at this point, it's either in the system or not. And so right when you set up your Stessa account, um, if, you, if you move forward and want to access your data via the automated bank connections, you can actually search, search the database and um, try to get that connection established right away. If there's some issue or the bank's not supported, then we've got a process to go in and try to get them added. And that's a little bit hit or miss. And, you know, it can take, uh, it can take a few weeks, mm -hmm. maybe sometimes longer. And it's really a function of how many others are, you know, requesting the same, the same link. Sure. But it's great. Once it starts working, you know, that data flows in, uh, in real time as transactions post to your account. And then we've set up algorithms and processes that go through and auto categorize a lot of it. So um, we've got an index of real estate specific categories. And this is where we differ a lot from something like QuickBooks, mm -hmm. where it's on you to set it up yourself. With Stessa, we've got real estate specific categories already set up. And then our algorithms try to match as many of the transactions as possible to the right category. So it really cuts down on the sort of manual bookkeeping type work. And we've seen that um, for a lot of investors, they can get further along in their portfolio building process before they have to hire a dedicated bookkeeper and a CPA and sort of staff up. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of this stuff you can kind of do on your own with software helping you. Right. And I think the other advantage of that is that you also get a much better sense as to how these issues impact your bottom line and what you're spending on r and and why is this utility bill so high? When you offload that to a bookkeeper too early before you really understand the issues and haven't been investing for mm -hmm. very long, I think you, you miss some of the nuances and that can really impact your performance later on if you're not paying attention to the right things. Sure. So can you tell, break down, is there a way within the software to track the type of exit strategy? So uh, for example, your rental properties versus your fix and flip versus your wholesaling? Yeah, so you know, our platform is really targeted at uh, long-term rentals that are um, you know, fully owned. So uh, while there are people using it for fix and flip, we're not quite as strong in, in terms of tracking your, um, you know, your, your basis and your date placed in service for the asset and your capital along the way. You can certainly do it, and we've got um, a couple of help articles that'll help you work through that. Mm -hmm. uh, but our focus is really on, um, you know, buy and hold investors. Obviously, you want to sell at some point, right? And so, right. dashboard is is really helpful for that. You can track your uh, cash on cash return on a leverage basis. You can track your equity, and you can track your cash in. So um, between those three numbers, you can get a pretty good idea as to, you know, when you've got enough equity built up in a property that it's time to maybe either refinance and take some cash out or sell, do a 1031 uh, into a bigger asset and redeploy that equity. Mm -hmm. And that's something we've seen a lot, especially in the last few years, as values have risen, um, that investors are able to go out and redeploy and grow their portfolio that way. Sure. Okay. So is there a limit to the number of properties that you can, that you can manage or, or review in your, in your software? Is there any, no, there's, there's no limit. Um, and the core platform is free, as we mentioned. Uh, I think it's best for people with two or more properties. You can certainly set up one and get a feel for it. 
Um, usually with just one property, you're not feeling all that much pain yet in terms of keeping track of things. Um, but we've got, you know, people on the platform with 50 or 100 properties. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice things is you can also reorganize things into portfolios. So those can be based on geography or your LLC structures or your partnerships. And then you can actually invite partners to share your account and you can give them various levels of, of access. So it's kind of a nice collaboration tool that way too. Sure. Do what, what kind of insights would you say um, are provided by the platform that might surprise an investor? Like something that might, you know, like we, we said, a lot of people, especially early on, are on probably an Excel spreadsheet at best. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I would say having my own, um, you know, small investment portfolio on it, um, I've been surprised at how um, it's not always, you don't, you're not always making as much money as you think you are mm -hmm. or that you expected you would when you underwrote the deal. Right. Um, and so like I've had to put in a little more CapEx than I expected. Um, some of my uh, R&M has been higher than I expected, especially in the first three to four months after getting my arms around what's actually going on at the property and um, getting the real story from the tenant that, that came through with the deal. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that's something that's, that's uh, you know, not necessarily something you want to see, but it's something you need to see and need to understand, especially as you go forward and, and underwrite new deals to get your modeling you know, more accurate. But I think it also helps you, you hone in on what the issues are, right? And um, it's, it's a quick way to learn where you're actually spending money and then to really evaluate, is that, um, is that the right strategy? So it's, right. it's, I guess it's, there's truth that comes through in the dashboard pretty obviously, especially once you've got your accounts connected and you're getting the real live data on the back end. It's hard to lie to yourself about how things are actually going. Right. So what kind of uh, reports are generated? Like, let's say uh, I can see how this could potentially help with your tax preparation and and when you do have a when you do get your bookkeeper or tax preparer involved what kind of reports are can be generated out of here to hand over to the uh, to that next round yeah so there's a pretty comprehensive income statement there's a net cash flow report um, you can also track your um, escrows and so um, it's great for reconciling uh, escrow balances, taxes actually paid, uh, you're kind of, you know, back and forth with the lender. You can also track your capital expenses, including date, place, and service, and useful life. So that particular report is a great one to hand over to your CPA to the end of the year, and then, you know, it kind of puts them on the five-yard line, and they can get through the depreciation calcs pretty quickly from there. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've also got a tax package report that kind of rolls up uh, four or five different reports plus attaches all your receipts and image files for the year. And so if you have been using CESA throughout the year, uh, it's pretty quick in, you know, late January, early February, once all the data is in there, you can run a tax package. And then um, that's actually an email you can just forward to your CPA and they can access all the reports. You can also invite your CPA into your account if you want to give them a little more access. Sure. You know, there's more reports we want to do. Um, I've tested a pilot um, with, with uh, a few really um, involved users around cost basis and tracking your, um, you know, closing costs. And, you know, some of those get dished out to capital. Some are current year expenses. So that's been helpful. That's something I want to work on next year. And then um, we'd also like to get just a little more detail on, on the actual depreciation to mm -hmm. help you with your CPA even more. Um, as well as to help users understand how it works. A lot of newer users, newer sure. investors don't really appreciate that yet. Yeah, you mentioned when we, before we started the call that you've added quite a bit of functionality over the year, uh, over this past year. So what are some of those highlights based on your user feedback? Yeah, two big, things we, yeah two big things we did this year. Um, one is we added the ability to securely store your documents. So things like leases, uh, settlement statements, even, you know, your full mortgage document, if you want to, um, all of that can now be uploaded to your SESA account. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that ties in with this idea of 
we really want to give people a place to see everything at, at once. And so having all those documents handy, if you need to look up a tenant name or contact info or, you know, some detail in an inspection report from three years ago, uh, it's nice to have all those in one place. And then um, the other thing we've, we've done this year is we re reorganized the rent roll to make it a little easier. Um, we built alerts that go out automatically via email 60 and 30 days out from your lease expirations. Uh, we're working on the same for insurance. So um, trying to help people kind of stay on top of key dates that are coming up. And so rebuilding that really helped us kind of reorganize that. And then we actually just, because you know we're a free platform, we got to make money somehow. So um, we also just a few weeks ago launched our first premium paid feature, which mm -hmm. is a rent estimate report. So uh, that's a way that um, if you've got a vacancy coming up, or you're trying to renew a tenant, you're not sure what rent to publish your ad at or to go back to your tenant with. Uh, this report really hones in, analyzes a bunch of different data sources and gives you a recommended rental rate range based on what's happening in, in your zip code, in your neighborhood. Um, and it also shows you trends and some other comps. You can, you can be more comfortable with the rate that you're going out with. Right. So, you know, we also, you talked about the, the banking connections and what can be pulled in, you know, you're adding your, the companies you're working with are adding banks all the time. Are there property management software that you also integrate with them? Yeah. So we also connect to Appfolio, which okay. from our interviews with investors was uh, by far the most frequently cited uh, property management reporting tool. So we've got a really solid integration with Appfolio um, and your property manager, generally, we find that most of them publish the owner statement report on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So that's the report that Stessa can go in and pull automatically. And then uh, we translate all the, all the line items in there over into uh, your transaction ledger in Stessa. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a really good way to uh, have access to all that detail and then also layer on the parts that you're doing yourself, which often include, you know, paying your insurance, uh, paying your taxes, um, any CapEx that you're doing directly, not through your property manager. So, um, you know, for a lot of user, a lot of investors, once you get to a certain point, you need somebody doing the, handling the work orders and all that detail, but you usually don't hand everything over to them. So, um, so that's a great way to, 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 you know, bring things together. Right. Well, we covered quite a bit of stuff here. Um, so I guess, you know, if, if uh, you're still managing your, your uh, properties and trying to understand the cash flow of them uh, on your spreadsheet, maybe it's time to take a look at Stessa here. Devin, out, outside of what we've talked about and covered here today, was there anything else that you can think of that uh, you'd like to uh, highlight? Um, you know, I think we covered the, the highlights for Stessa for sure. Um, you know, I, as I mentioned, I run kind of the customer success side. So uh, myself and my team, um, we love hearing from new investors, uh, new users on the Stessa platform. Um, that's where we get a lot of our ideas and inspiration to keep going and build new things. So um, I would just say, as you know, your audience, people want to um, go to www.stessa.com. It's S-T-E-S-S-A. Super quick to set up an account, um, but like reach out to us. You, there's a little blue circle in the lower right. You can just open a conversation, um, and we'll you know we'll help you get through it. And then we love just chatting about real estate generally too, because we're all you know we're all doing this because um, we've we've gotten something out of investing ourselves as well. Sure. Well, I appreciate you really appreciate your time, Devin, and uh, I hope we can chat again. Uh, this is a Kind of, this is an interesting platform and uh, I hope uh, people take advantage and, and take a look at it. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me. We've put a lot of effort into providing useful content and if you've found value in the show and have any interest in supporting us with a small donation, head over to patreon.com slash house dudes. And if you have any thoughts or questions, shoot us an email at info at house dudes.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at house dudes. And if you like what you're hearing, head over to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. It really helps other investors out there find the show. 
And remember, massive positive impact requires massive positive action. We'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by HouseDudes.com. Do you have time to actively manage flipping and rentals yourself? If so, go for it. If you live in a market that won't cash flow or don't have the time to do all the work, are you just out of luck? If there was a way to participate more passively, would that appeal to you? I'm sure you have questions about how the process works and what to do next. If that's the case, fill out the form on housedudes.com slash investors, and we'll reach out to see if you are a good fit for our business. This is First Come, First Serve, and we will have to stop taking applications when our goals are met. See you at housedudes.com slash investors. I don't like to tell a man what to do with his money, but if you ain't investing in property, then you're dumber than a dummy. I'm not dumb. I'm smart. Well, buy property. That's my advice. <laughs>